Good morning, Bow Valley Baptist, and welcome to another one of our Sunday morning online services. Whether you're tuning in on a home desktop computer, a TV in the living room, a tablet in the kitchen, or really anywhere else these days, we're so glad you could join us. We hope the next hour or so is going to be a great spiritual blessing to you. Now, my name is Alexander Brown, and I serve here as a sort of pastoral intern. I have my hands in a whole bunch of different ministries, so you're sure to see me around. Before we get to the actual church service, there's just a few things I'd like to mention. First of all, if you'd like to stay connected to Bow Valley, and I would encourage you to do so, check us out on Facebook and on Instagram under Bow Valley Baptist. You'll find there updates and news, as well as some of the daily devotionals that we've been making for you. You'll find those same devotionals here on YouTube if that's what you prefer, and you'll want to hit that red subscribe button so you'll be notified when they're coming out. To stay uh, up to date on some information for Bow Valley Baptist itself, as well as receive our weekly newsletter, you'll find the option to sign up for that bottom right-hand side of bowvalleybaptist.com on the main page. It goes out every Friday and has all the information that you'll need to know for the upcoming week. Now lastly, for you children, you'll want to know that every Sunday Miss Leanne has a new video that she's made for you, and you're going to want to check that out. We all got to do what we can to stay connected these days, and it's important that you know that we're thinking about all of you all of the time. Now God bless, and I hope that you enjoy the service. Thank you for joining us on our worship service. Uh, my name is David, and I'm on staff here at Bow Valley Baptist Church. And I just want to encourage you guys, as we use this, as we enter into this worship service, to use this beginning time to worship God. Now, you can worship God in a number of ways. You can express your love for Jesus by thinking how you can show kindness to someone in his name, and, and you can maybe pick a time to do it later on. You can pray for others. You can you can give, whether it's to the church or someone in need. Um, we know of the story in the Bible where Jesus was at the temple with some of his uh, followers, and there was a widow who was giving a financial amount um, to the temple there. And it wasn't the amount, though, that was pointed out in the story as being important. It was the heart of the giver. And through giving, God considers this an act of worship. We can worship by obeying the promptings of the Holy Spirit, however that might look like. Uh, we can worship by reading our Bibles and being and being grateful for who God is in our in our hearts. And, and none of these things involve singing. Um, now we're going to sing here um, because it's a good way to express praise, and we know that we can still do that in spirit together, um, even through the screens. And I just want to encourage you guys uh, to, however you want to engage in worship during this next two songs that we're going to be uh, showing you guys, let's remember that our location and our circumstances don't need to limit our worship to God. And neither do our our abilities either. We can ask God uh, for help in that if we need to, but let's just use this time to, to seek God's face and to uh, to humble ours. And so with that, I want to introduce this next song, which is called I Believe. in the 
Paul wrote a prayer to the Ephesians church uh, that I want to read for you, and it is in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 to 19. Uh, And he is writing out this prayer um, to God the Father, and it says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And I just want to let that prayer be a prayer that goes out to to all of us uh, as we listen to this next song.
the children's ministry here at Bow Valley. Today, Pastor Gary is going to be continuing with his sermon series called What is God Doing? Kids, you probably remember how many times we talked about God's promises and how those promises always come true. Well, today, Pastor Gary is going to be speaking from 2 Chronicles 7, 14, which starts like this. If my people who are called by my name, and then it talks about an action on our part and a promise God will give. You know, with all this rainy weather we've been having, I would probably want to clothe myself with a raincoat if I wanted to stay dry. It might be a good idea. Well, today Pastor Gary is going to be talking about clothing ourselves with blank. I want you to listen and see if you can figure out what goes in that blank, what it is that God says we should clothe ourselves with. And then secondly, if you want to listen at the end, there is a promise that God gives us. See if you can figure out maybe more than one promise that God gives um, to us. Be listening for those two things as we listen on Pastor Gary's message today. Uh, thanks, Leanne, for that video. We are in the third week of our series entitled, What is God Doing? It is a huge question. We've actually been using a scripture from the Old Testament to strive to answer that question. And I'd like us to dive right back into that passage of scripture now as we begin uh, this message. We're looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. God's word tells us, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. What is God doing? Well, I think what God really wants to do is to see deep life change take place in each and every one of us. He wants us to understand and know his ways and how he works. And so he is desiring to use this message in your life and my life today to help us to understand something so huge that really is the key to understanding how to answer the question what is God doing? We're going to take a look at two different authors from the New Testament and their writings about our subject matter today. Our subject is humility. Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 10. James has written, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. And then the second passage we want to look at is written by an author by the name of Peter. He said, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Now, as far as we can tell, James and Peter didn't have one another's writings to use to inspire their own writings. But it's very clear that they were actually in these chapters actually quoting a passage from the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34, which tells us this. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Look at how James applied this and put this right into his book in James chapter 4, verse 6. He said, and he gives grace generously as the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace generously. To the humble. And then Peter also quotes the exact same verse in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. So just to be clear about what we have seen here, if one is prideful, that person puts themselves into a place of God's opposition. That is not a good place. 
<laughs> well, so now before we run off and we figure out five easy steps to humility, we better take a look at the context of these verses that Peter and James were writing within. Honestly, James and Peter were writing in a context of trials and difficulties. Look at James chapter four, verse one and two. He says, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire to do and not have, so you fight and quarrel. Well, the trial that's being experienced here is fighting and quarreling. And anyone who's beginning to quarrel and fight now, they do have an option. And so James in the middle of this trial is talking about the significance of humility and God's desire for humility to win, not someone's pride. But let me be really honest with you and frank. Humility in the middle of anything and in the middle of a trial or a difficult situation is much more difficult at first than going the way of pride. It just is. I wish that were not so, but it is. But I'm telling you, the fruit of humility is much sweeter. So we're asking this question, what is God doing? Well, if conflicts arise, what God wants in his people is humility. It will snuff out a disagreement like nothing else. It will. I mean, have you ever tried to blow out a candle that was so, so difficult to blow out? And then have you seen someone like lip, lick their fingers and put it on that candle and then it goes just right out, just like that? Well, humility will also do that to a quarrel. It will bring peace and resolve. Now, the trial that the uh, First Peter passage is being written in, the context of that passage is literally that the church actually is under great pressure. The society that Peter was writing into was mouthing its insults and maligning the early Christians, and they're beginning to suffer socially and emotionally. They're under threat. They're tempted to be anxious. And it's at this moment that Peter is writing to them to be humble. And that's where he quotes Proverbs chapter 3, 34 that we spoke of a moment ago. And then he challenges them to this in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Look at what he said. He said, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. <laughs> Here the church that Peter is writing to is experiencing insults, pressures from without. How are they going to respond to those pressures? What are they going to do? Are they going to react with pride or self-exaltation? Are they going to humble themselves? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really curious. What, what was Peter meaning when he said, clothe yourselves? What was he talking about? You know what it caused me to think of? I thought of Mr. Dress Up. <laughs> Did any of you watch Mr. Dress Up? Now, at the beginning of the show of Mr. Dress Up, there's this cartoon, if you remember watching it or watching it with your kids or whatever, and it goes along and he's in the cartoon in his regular clothes, and then all of a sudden this rainbow kind of comes up and it puts him and he's all of a sudden a clown, and then in that intro, he's also an artist. I don't know if you can remember the pictures from Mr. Dress Up, but literally, Peter is telling us, dress up, clothe yourselves, and he tells his whole audience to clothe themselves. Look at what he said here. Here's the passage. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. Humility is of the utmost importance for your life and for my life and even for our church's life. So let's work to unpack this verse of Peter a little bit more, shall we? Let's look at the context for a minute. First Peter chapter five, beginning with verse two. Peter said, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you'll get out of it, but because you're eager to serve God. Don't lord over it or over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you'll receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. 
Well, the context of this is it's like speaking, Peter's speaking to like pastors and leaders in the church, like our leadership team and like our staff team. And there is to be a great deal of humility in church leadership. Why? Well, it's because there is coming a day when the leadership of the church will face the great shepherd, Jesus Christ himself. But when a church is led this way from a willing leader who's eager to serve God, and when they're not lording it over them, but when they're setting a good example, Peter tells us that there will be a crown for leading like that. But then Peter goes on to say, look at that. You see what's italicized there? He says, in the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So Peter said, in the same way. (laughs) What did that mean? Well, what were they doing? What were the leaders doing? Well, they were serving the church willingly, eagerly, leading by example, leading in such a way as to not exalt themselves. Not leading from this position of dominance, but from a position of humility. You see, pastors, shepherds, leaders in the church, they have a responsibility for this group of people that God entrusts to them. And the group that's entrusted to these leaders also has a responsibility to follow that leadership. Now, this is not such common language in our culture today to talk about the idea of authority and submission and all this kind of thing. But don't miss this idea of what's being shared here. Churches are to be led by humble people that know how to clothe themselves in humility and they are modeling for others how to do this and what it does is then it can help a church to then also be acting and living in that modeled humility. This is such a big deal to God and it is something so key that the world today needs from the church that we will live in this idea of humility. You see, when you see leaders leading this way, then you should recognize the fact that you are a follower of these leaders and that you desire to have the same type of living and leading and being in your own life. This is why it's so important to be a part of a local church and a local congregation and to have your local pastors and teachers and ministers speaking into your life and then you have this sense of accountability about it and you are taking it and receiving it And my prayer is for you that as I continue to work through this message, that God will put such a sense in your heart and a longing to understand what does this mean to walk in humility. I'm telling you, if you want to know what God is doing in the world today, you must learn humility. And I must. Humility was actually one of the key characteristics of the Lord Jesus himself. Here's for your notes today. Dress yourselves in humility. Isn't it interesting how in every culture, every culture, people are known by the way that they dress. Like you can tell many times what someone's job is by the way that they dress. Or many times you can tell a lot about a person's personality by the way that they're dressing. Sometimes you can tell what type of things that are important to people by the way they dress. Our dress tells us a lot about a person. Well, Peter so longs for the identifying uniform of the follower of Jesus to be humility. And you know, If we're living out the mission statement we have here at Bow Valley, love like Jesus and live like Jesus, if we're truly doing that, we will be a humble people. We'll be a humble people out in our neighborhoods, out on our ranches, out on our farms, and going about our work and our family life and our relationships and our friends, even though we may be in cowboy boots like what I'm wearing uh, in this message or in our finest, nicest dress shoes going right into the heart of downtown Calgary, whatever the case may be, everyone that is living and loving like Jesus, truly, they will be people that are clothed in humility. 
So let me say to you, if you love Jesus dearly, you'll desire to be humble, and that will literally grant God the freedom to do what it takes. If you say, God, I, I want this. I want to be everything you want me to be. Well, humility grants great freedom for God to work in your life. And I invite you to put on the uniform of humility. There's actually so many significant reasons for it. But look at this passage here again. And all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So this is for your notes, okay? Why dress ourselves with humility? Don't miss this. Because God opposes the proud. We will not know what God is doing if we are proud and arrogant. We, we just won't. There ought to be such a holy fear, so to speak. When we see a scripture like this, this idea, look at that that God opposes the proud. He is in opposition to the proud. And so we should so long to know his grace. And a healthy fear like that will destroy pride and will desire grace. <laughs> you see, desiring what God wants us to, de to desire will cultivate humility. It will. There's our verse again. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. This is for your notes here. Humility is the key. It's the key to experiencing God in every way. Pride is the key to missing God in every way. Now, most of us, we humbled ourselves enough to realize our sin and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Most of us did that. But to continue to grow, to truly experience the ongoing grace of the work of Jesus Christ in our lives, to truly experience the life of Christ, there must be a sense of growing humility in each one of us. I want us to get really practical about that, okay? <laughs> there is no five-step plan to becoming more humble next week or tomorrow or in 10 days or a month. Now, we might take the initiative to cultivate the posture of humility in ourselves. But the main test, the main test, the opportunity for humility to grow comes when we're confronted by something that causes our pride to begin to swell up. <laughs> And the question comes to us when that pride begins to swell up, if the Spirit of God is active and alive in our lives and we're following Jesus passionately wanting to know him, then this question will come. How will I respond to this circumstance? Will I humble myself? Now here for your notes here, you see for Christians, for true followers of Jesus, self Humbling is mainly responsive. It's mainly in response to something. And will I respond like Jesus in humility? <laughs> Here in the last few days, my wife Sue and I, we've been married about um, 25 and a half years. And so we had one of those moments in some conversation where I really needed to swallow my pride. Now, I don't know that any of you can relate to that, but man, this was a moment where I knew I really needed to swallow my pride. And to be honest, I didn't want to. Anyone relate to that? You're in a conversation, it's challenging, you know you need to swallow your pride and you just don't want to. And so I had to work so hard and diligently to get to a place, listen, where I was thinking rightly, where I was getting ready to respond rightly and what I was getting ready to say. And I'm telling you, do you remember what I said earlier in my message? Is that humility is a lot harder, but the fruit of it is a lot sweeter. Pride is actually much easier. You can respond in pride and just go off the hook and say whatever you want to. But if you want to respond humbly, when your pride wants to swell up, you have to work very, very hard to do it. At least I do. But this is so, so key that we work to clothe ourselves in humi humility. It's so, so important. And, Sue got, and I got to a real sweet spot. Why? You see, the ripple effect of humility is huge. It's huge. When we can put ourselves, get ourselves to that place of humbling ourselves. 
You see, it was in a time of difficulty where I learned humility. In difficulty, many times is where we learn humility. <laughs> but why don't we choose the humble way? Why do we let our pride win? Well, you know why. <laughs> it's just because we're stubborn. Man, that was honest, wasn't it? We're just stubborn. And we don't want to go to all that work and effort. Let me tell you about a guy named King Hezekiah. He was a king seven centuries before Christ. What happened to him is actually God healed him on his deathbed. And yet the king, because of his proud heart, did not do what God desired of him. And so he brought God's opposition to himself. We find his story in the book of 2 Chronicles. You should look it up. Same book as our theme verse. <laughs> We need to learn a valuable lesson from that king. God is opposed to the proud. God will begin to work the work of humbling us, or look at this, we can choose the hard work of humbling ourselves through what? Through his strength. I'm telling you, you can't do the proper work of humbling yourself without his strength. You just can't. We're just plain too stubborn. We cannot work it up in ourselves. I so needed God last week when Sue and I were in that conversation for him to really help me to truly humble myself. So the question is whether it will be our self-humbling or further and often more severe humbling from God. I'm inviting you tonight to not have to go there. I'm inviting you tonight to consider the hard work of clothing yourselves with humility. I said tonight, it could be this morning, whenever it is you're watching this, I'm considering you, I'm asking you to do that hard work. You see, for Hezekiah, the king, what happened? Well, he did acknowledge God's opposition to his own pride. It got his attention and look at what happened with him. Then Hezekiah humbled himself and repented of his pride, as did the people of Jerusalem. So the Lord's anger did not fall on them during Hezekiah's lifetime to know what God is doing you and me we need to humble ourselves and repent of our pride we do let's dress up ourselves in humility let's be a church full of people like that I'm telling you a church full of people that are clothing themselves in humility, walking in humility, letting God do the hard work of humility in our hearts, our minds, our thinking, our words, our service, everything about us, it will draw you so close to Jesus Christ himself. If you want to understand how humble Jesus was, take a look at Philippians chapter 2 in the New Testament. It will show you. And I'm telling you, the ripple effect of humility is incredible. I'm praying for you that you will allow God to do this great work in your heart. Let's pray right now. Father, I ask right now that you will teach us about this, that you will inspire us toward this, and that when we get in a time of difficulty where our pride is rising, would your spirit remind us and would you allow us to do the hard work of humbling ourselves, of clothing ourselves in humility. And God, thank you for that. Thank you, God, for producing a church full of people that are so humble, so full of the life of Christ that it just oozes out to the people around us and that we just would see dynamic change in the hearts of others because there's such dynamic change in each and every one of us. God, thanks for that. Thank you for this teaching in your word. Thank you for the Second Chronicles passage that is teaching us how you work and move. And God, you are showing us what you're doing. You are involved in radically changing us. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hello, Bow Valley family. You'll see here at the end of the service, I'm actually sitting at my own home like most of you are. Uh, but I have an invitation. We will have our online service this next weekend, but for those of you that can come, we are also going to be hosting a drive-in service at Bow Valley in our parking lot this next Sunday, the 31st of May. It's really a special celebration for us to regather and to celebrate our 30th anniversary of the government of Alberta recognizing Bow Valley Baptist Church as a congregation. 
So I'd love to invite you to that. It will be on Sunday the 31st at 10 a.m. And so we'll look forward to seeing you there in our parking lot. Please watch all of our social media and our communications this next week uh, so you can know more details about that. Uh, would you call the office or write to our office off of our website to let us know in case you do not get our or receive our weekly email communications? We'd love for you to have that uh, so you can know more about what's taking place with us. Look forward to seeing you face to face or online as well next weekend. God bless you. Thanks for joining us for our service today.